What's happening guys? What's going on YouTube? You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels and in today's video we're going to be talking about a Turkish cryptocurrency exchange that just did a, uh, a rug pull or an exit scam uh, fleecing investors out of two billion dollars. I'm not really familiar with this cryptocurrency exchange uh, but apparently how they grew so quickly they had almost 400,000 users. They grew so quickly by offering free Dogecoin or free doggy coin uh, to users to lure them on the platform. Now, why I thought this was kind of an interesting article, uh, one, we haven't really heard a ton about, uh, you know, exit scams or crypto exchange scams in quite a while. Um, and part of the reason I wanted to bring this up, you know, getting back to the whole idea of not your keys, not your coins, I see a lot of people kind of abandoning that mentality. And I even at times have kind of thought, maybe it's not that bad keeping your money on an exchange. Now, I think there's probably a difference between exchanges in Turkey and exchanges in the US. Uh, you know, th this exchange was called Thodex. Uh, obviously, I think Coinbase is much more well capitalized. It's been around for a number of years. They're making plenty of money doing things legitimately. There's not really a, a need to, to steal everybody's money and run away. Uh, obviously, the US has a stronger justice system and regulatory system to go after people. But I do see a lot of people saying things like, you know, like like Coinbase and Gemini and, and you know, Binance or Voyager, you know, these companies are regulated, they're insured. You know, a lot of people are probably more likely to lose their cryptocurrency on their own than they are in an exchange. And while I do think a lot of those things are true, you know, back in, you know, I think I got involved in crypto in, in 2013 or so. Back then, it was really the Wild West. Um a lot of exit scams, a lot of exchanges shutting down, running away with people's money, a lot more scams. I, I don't think a lot of these exchanges were regulated or insured in the same way that they are today. Uh, but back in the day, you know, there was a, a strong sentiment of not your keys, not your coins, hold and control your own cryptocurrencies. And while a lot of people didn't do it back then, I think even more so today, people are like, you know, these exchanges today are a lot more legitimate. Again, new users might be more likely to lose their coins on their own than they are to an exchange hack. Uh, people come up with all types of reasons and excuses to justify leaving their crypto on exchanges. And I think this just kind of goes to highlight that it's not that safe. Here's one other problem that I think causes people to leave money on exchanges. With, with coins like, I think the average Bitcoin send is costing about $60 right now. Uh, Ethereum is incredibly expensive to do things like staking or DeFi. Um, a simple send isn't quite as expensive, but I mean, still, you're looking at 20 to $60 uh, to send Ethereum around at times. And, you know, for your average person who's buying 100, 200, 300, a couple hundred dollars worth of cryptocurrency, if you were to buy crypto on an exchange and then send it off to your wallet, buy crypto on an exchange, send it off to your wallet. If you're not dealing with huge sums of money, if you're, <coughs> excuse me, if you're buying 100 200 300 worth of cryptocurrency say you buy 100 dollars worth of cryptocurrency and it costs you 20 or 30 dollars to send that crypto uh over to a hardware wallet or you know over to some other type of wallet i mean that's 20 percent you're giving up every time you do that and if you're dollar cost averaging buying 100 dollars a week or 100 dollars a month and you're doing that three or four times a month i mean you're spending 80 percent you're, you're losing 20 percent of your money every time you send over uh to your own wallet so i kind of understand why people are like uh you know i guess i'll just kind of roll the dice and leave my money on an exchange uh, again, I think this is much less likely to happen in the U.S., but let's take a look at this article which comes to us from Zero Hedge. Uh, dozens arrested after CEO of Turkish cryptocurrency exchange flees with $2 billion. And again, what's interesting, how he grew this exchange was by offering people free Do Dogecoin. Turkish authorities have detained 62 people over alleged links to the Istanbul-based cryptocurrency exchange Thodex after its founder fled with a reported $2 billion in investors' assets, Turkish media reported. The suspects were apprehended in raids carried out in eight cities, including Istanbul, on Dula Agency reported on Friday. Police issued arrest warrants for 16 other people. The arrest came after nearly 400,000 users of the cryptocurrency exchange were left were left out of their accounts without being able to withdraw their funds. The platform's website has been down for several days, while reports suggest its CEO has already fled the country with up to $2 billion. Now, one of the last big exchange hacks that I recall, uh, like one of the mainstream ones, and especially one of the bigger ones in a Western country, what, what was that Canadian exchange? It was called like Quad, Quadranix or Quadrex or something like that. 
Uh, if you guys recall, the the guy, and I, I don't know what eventually came about that. I don't know if he's been found, but he went on a vac- vacation to India, supposedly got like a stomach, I think he had Crohn's disease, supposedly got a stomach virus and wound up dying. Uh, obviously, India is a country where money, you know, money can do a lot of things. And it's kind of a place where you, where it's kind of notorious that you can fake your death or, or pay off a coroner to get a death certificate. So this guy who ran this Canadian exchange ran off with everybody's money, claimed that, you know, the 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 story was that he hadn't left backup keys or seeds with anybody. And uh, he supposedly died in India, was cremated, and, you know, all the money is lost forever. Uh, I think it's probably more likely that he wound up faking his death. But that's one of the last uh, kind of big exit scams that we saw from an exchange. Uh, Back to the article, Bloomberg reported that Thodex, a Turkey-based cryptocurrency exchange, has ceased trading, citing an unspecified partnership transaction. The trading platform, I guess it's not that new, which was founded in 2017, issued a statement explaining that all services will remain shut down for about five working days. However, the message reassured customers that they shouldn't worry about their funds. In In retrospect, they should have. And uh, let's see, here's a tweet about it. A local crypto exchange where I had 20% of my entire trading capital got rug pulled. 20 days with no withdrawals, fiat or crypto. Then the website went offline. Then the CEO run abroad. I'm not broke, but it hurts a lot. It sucks even when you deal with regulated exchanges. And that's one of the things that this article touches on is in Turkey, I guess for about six grand, you can start up an exchange. So it's not like you'd have to invest a lot of money in to you know, enter this market where you're potentially going to be handling billions of dollars for people. He wasn't alone on Thursday. Hundreds of thousands of users were unable to access their digital wallets. We have started the legal procedures and lodged complaints in the prosecutor's office, a lawyer for some investors said. Prosecutors were investigating the businessman on charges of aggravated fraud and founding a criminal organization. And obviously, I don't read Turkish, uh, but that's kind of the complaint right there. Um, Let's see. According to subsequent coverage, the exchange's chief executive officer and founder, Fok Face Ozer, had fled the country. Following news of Ozer's alleged escape from Turkey, users of the local exchange hired a law firm to file a complaint against Thodix. Uh, Ogiz Everin Kilik, representing an unspecified number of Thodex customers, confirmed the development, saying, We have filed a legal complaint on Wednesday. Uh, He speculated that funds on a Turkish exchange could be worth hundreds of millions of dollars as the exchange had 391,000 users. According to another report, Thodex's CEO and founder has run away in Thailand with an estimated amount of roughly $2 billion. Overnight, Turkish security officials released a photo of Thodex founder Farouk Faith Ozer going through passport control at the Istanbul airport on his way to Albania. On Friday, Interior Minister Suleiman Soylu made a phone call to his Albanian counterpart to request Ozer be captured and repatriated. At the same time, Turkish police raided the company's headquarters on the Asian side of Istanbul and seized computers and digital materials, press reports revealed. Turkish authorities also started procedures to issue an international warrant to arrest and extradite the missing founder of a cryptocurrency exchange, Andula Agency reported. In a message on the company's Twitter, Ozer said he was He was abroad for a meeting with foreign investors and would return home in a few days and cooperate with judicial authorities so that the truth can come out. Subsequent updates indicated that this was a lie. In recent months, a growing number of Turks turned to cryptocurrency in a bid to shield their savings in the face of a sharp decline in the value of the Turkish lira and high inflation. The Turkish crypto markets remained unregulated despite growing skepticism from President Recep tie up Ergadin's government about its safety. And if you guys remember, a couple of years ago, uh, I know the Chinese, probably back in 2016, 2017, uh, were putting a lot of their money into crypto because of a declining yuan. Uh, I think Greece was either seizing people's bank accounts or limiting how much money they could take out of ATMs. Um, and their money was obviously depreciating. So a lot of uh, a lot of Greeks were putting their money into crypto. And I think the same thing came, uh, came about in Malta as well. So when a company's economy... Uh, is in turmoil when their currency is losing value against the rest of the world, oftentimes 30%, 50%, 60%. Uh, Venezuela being another example, a lot of people turn to cryptocurrency. Last week, Turkish authorities took a step to regulating the cryptocurrency exchange. And as reported last week, Turkey officially banned users from using crypto as payment instruments starting on April 30th, although I believe that has since been reversed. 
The government spent a massive $165 billion in foreign exchange reserves over the past two years, effectively leaving its central bank without reserves, Ergodin revealed on Wednesday, part of a futile effort to prop up the national currency. Concern about the country's dwindling foreign exchange reserves, which are negative when money borrowed by the government from private banks via swap agreements are factored in, has fueled concern about both the lira and dollar deposits and push savers into alternative investment vehicles like cryptocurrency. Last Friday, the volume of trade in Turkish crypto markets tripled to over $1.2 billion from a week earlier. According to data published by CoinGecko.com, which tracks uh, data on price, volume, and market value of crypto markets. That compares with an average daily trading volume in the Turkish stock market in the Turkish stock markets bench uh, benchmark index of about 3.1 billion. One can establish a cryptocurrency exchange with just about 50,000 lira, which is about six thousand dollars in capital. Uh, Ogas Evren Kilik, a lawyer representing Thodex users, said by phone, "There's a huge regulatory gap in this field. And to start a cryptocurrency exchange in the U.S., even outside of hiring developers and getting insured and all that, like just to get the licensing set up for uh, all the different states, would cost probably at a minimum seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, potentially upwards of a million dollars." And that was under former rules about like money transmitter licenses and MSB licenses. Now that a lot of uh, states are requiring people to not only get like an MSB license or a money transmitter license, but also they've developed these specific like cryptocurrency, uh, you know, exchange licenses, it, you're probably looking at a million and a half dollars. Meanwhile, as Bloomberg reports last month, Sothodex initiated a campaign to boost membership by offering millions of free Dogecoins to new registrants. Its website says 4 million of the Dogecoins were distributed. Many people have taken to social media to complain they never received them. In the latest development in this bizarre saga, in a statement published from an unknown location, Thodex CEO Farouk Faith Ozer promised to repay investors and return to Turkey to face justice after he did. I don't think that's going to happen, but we'll see. I was born as one of three siblings of a civil servant, Ozer said in a statement, adding that he's a high school dropout. As the company ran into financial trouble, he said he thought about either committing suicide or giving himself up to authorities, but both of those options meant clients' digital assets would never be retrieved. So I decided to stay alive and fight, work to repay my debts to you, he said. The day I repay my debt, I will return to my country and give myself into justice. Narrator, no, he won't. Uh, well, let's look at the comments. I noticed uh, Zero Hedge tends to be kind of anti-crypto. Like when things like this come up in the news or when crypto crashes and they do an article, people will be like, see, that fake internet money is worthless. You know, it's backed by nothing. So let's see what some people have to say in the comments. Uh, if you Okay, so here's the smart one. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Never leave money on an exchange longer than it's needed to make whatever transaction and more than you stand to lose. Mt. Gox taught everyone that years ago. And that's kind of why I thought it was interesting to bring up this article, right? Back in the early days of crypto, when things were the Wild West, the whole not your keys, not your coins was, was very strong in everybody's mind. Uh, now that we're getting a lot of new people in who are kind of just bandwagoners and not really like really, really into crypto, uh, you know, I bet you most people, I think something like 80% of people keep their money on exchanges. Uh, I would imagine most of the new people getting into crypto buy their crypto on Coinbase or Voyager or Robinhood or whatever else and never take it off of a platform. I actually recently got a buddy into crypto and he's buying Dogecoin on Robinhood despite me telling him that it's a stupid thing to do. But, you know, people just want to do what's easy um, and they don't really want to take the time to learn how to buy crypto and safely store their crypto. Uh, let's see what do other people say. Oh, you know, one thing I will say, back in the early days of crypto, it was a lot easier to send money around. So it was very cheap to buy money on Coinbase or some other platform and send it over to your wallet. Uh, I, you know, I kind of talked about this earlier, but when it's costing you $20, $60, even hundreds of dollars to send your crypto around and there's steep uh, steep withdrawal fees on crypto exchanges, I, I kind of understand why people do it, uh, but still doesn't necessarily make it safe. Let's uh, Let's see some other comments here. Just wait till the power goes out. What, me worry? You know, another person, oh, if the power goes out, Bitcoin's dead. Well, if the, if, if the electrical grid in the United States or the world goes out, uh, you got bigger problems than losing your crypto. In Biden's new green world, you can still go shopping with cryptos if the wind blows and the sun shines, provided the wind termi turbines are not frozen in and the solar panels are not covered with snow or anything else. Uh, so just tough luck to anyone who got caught whilst their coins were briefly in an exchange while being transacted. How do you avoid being caught out? Oh yeah, I get it. Hold forever till you die. Uh, let's see. Now the crooked people don't just steal $100 or $1,000 or a $1 million. The game is now a few billion or you are an amateur. Let's see. 
This fool with a death wish didn't didn't just rip off some suburban soccer moms. Customers would include Turkish government, mafia, Russian gangsters, and rogue and a rogues gallery of the worst criminals on earth. There is literally nowhere on this earth where this boy can escape these types of people. Even if he was the best special forces operative in the world, his survival would be days. His best bet is to immediately give back all the money, then hand himself over to authorities for his protection. Otherwise, they will roast him alive on a spit over a low fire. Uh, they beating, they pull his beating heart out and eat it. Uh, let's see. Crypto is a perfectly safe place to store your wealth until those in charge of managing the exchange abscond. Gold and silver, baby. Gold and silver in your hand. There is zero counterparty risk. So, you know, a lot of people who make these kind of anti-crypto uh, comments or have this anti-crypto sentiment don't really understand crypto. Um, if you were to buy gold certificates or buy gold and allow some type of vault or exchange to store it for you, the same exact thing could happen. Um, so, you know, keep your money on a hardware wallet, a ledger or a treasure. I'll put uh, uh, affiliate links to both the ledger and the treasure down in the description box below. If you keep your money on a ledger or, or a treasure, it's just as safe as keeping your, you know, gold or silver at home in a safe or under your mattress. And in a lot of ways, it might even be safer because somebody could always break into your house and steal your gold or silver. So, uh, we covered a couple comments there. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts about this article. Um, you know, what do you think about people storing their coins on exchanges these days as opposed to their own wallets or hardware wallets or even paper wallets? Drop a comment down below. Let me know. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.